I don't know about you, but I find that very encouraging. Amen. Yeah. Okay. We're going to continue our Transformed sermon series this morning. We're on week, week three of Transformed. Uh, last Sunday, we looked at uh, the script, uh, one of our scriptures was Mark chapter 12, where Jesus instructs us to love the Lord God with all of our heart and mind, soul, and strength. Jesus, in that list of things that he tells us to love him with, he says, all of your mind, all of your mind. God wants our minds, our thought life, what's going on in our brains to bring him glory and honor. The theme, for, uh, the theme verse for this series is Romans 12 too, which says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The mind is very important in this equation. As we continue our series this morning looking at uh, health in, in the seven key areas of life, we are going to see what God's word says about the health of our minds, our mental health. This is a critically important topic because our thoughts control our lives. Our brain is the control center of our bodies. So the question we're asking this morning is, how healthy is your mind? How healthy is your mind? Roughly one in five Canadians experience mental illness in a given year. That's quite a lot, one in five. And a lot of, in a lot of cases, the mental illness that you or your loved ones is dealing with is related to your brain's chemistry. There's a chemical imbalance that's going on. And some, I want to say this because it's important. Some pastors will um, discourage you from taking medication. They'll say, oh, it's not spiritual. You just need to have more faith. I'm not one of those pastors. <laughs> All right? Not me. If your doctor says that medication could help you with your mental illness, I encourage you to follow your doctor's advice. I have close family members who, that struggle with mental illness. I have lived up close and personal with mental illness my entire life. And I know firsthand that medication can make a big difference. Can anyone here say amen to that? Amen. Yeah. Okay. I think that God has given us these medications. He's given the wisdom to the scientists and the professionals who've figured that stuff out, right? That's good. We talked about, uh, about that and several other things last year. We had a great conversation, you maybe remember, up here on the platform about mental health. And I put the link uh, to that video in the description of this uh, YouTube uh, and Facebook video. It's also in the email that I sent out. You can find it on our YouTube channel if you want to go back and see that mental health discussion because it was really good. We had some professionals here. But I also know that medication is, yes, probably for a lot of people part of the solution, but it's not the only part of the solution. For many people, um, uh, sometimes long-term medication, sometimes short-term medication, but that's not the whole story. We can also choose to make certain decisions and take certain actions that will improve our mental health, whether we struggle with mental health, mental illness or not. For all of us, there are things that we can do to improve our, the condition of our minds so we can live a healthier life in all areas of our life. So that's today's discussion. What can we do to improve the condition and the health of our minds? <clears throat> and before I get to the three main points, I want to say this, because this is an important thing. The number one thing that you can do for your mental health is to be saved by Jesus, to be born again. That's so important. If you've never accepted Christ as your Savior, that's truly step one to achieving any kind of health in any of the seven areas of life. As we go along in everything that we're talking about in this series, we are making that assumption that you've accepted Christ, that you love Jesus and you have a relationship with Him and you believe in Him as your Savior. Because that is really step one. If you haven't been saved yet, if you haven't trusted in Christ, if you haven't turned your life over to God, I encourage you to do that. Like, if you don't hear anything else today, that's the most important thing. Trust in Christ today. If you want to talk about what that means, I'd love to talk to you. Uh, one of our deacons, talk to a Christian friend, uh, uh, whatever. Fill out our connection card on our website and say that you'd like to talk about that. I'll follow up with you. Um, it's really important. Okay, so that's kind of like the most important first step. But beyond that, uh, what are some things that we can choose that will 
improve the health of our minds. That's what we're going to talk about today. Three daily choices that we can make to improve the health of our minds. Three daily choices. This is uh, biblical teaching originally from Pastor Rick Warren, so I want to make that clear. Got to give credit where credit is due. Not plagiarizing, just borrowing from Pastor Rick. Um, so here's his three points. Janessa, there should be a slide there. It's a three daily choices uh, to improve my mental health. The first one is this. I must feed my mind with the truth. We talked last week about our physical health and how eating healthy is a big part of that, that's the process of being physically healthy. Um, eating good food, not junk food. And the same thing is true of our mental health. To feed our minds, not with junk, but with good stuff, with truth. The scriptures are our number one source of truth. The scriptures are our user's manual for life. And just like we need to eat every day to survive, and we need to eat healthy to thrive, we need to eat this book. We need to feed our mind with the Word of God every day to survive and thrive. Listen to a couple of these scripture passages. Psalm 119, 97 says, Oh, how I love your instructions. I think about them all day long. That's good. I hope that that's true for you. Psalm 1 says this, Oh, the joys of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or stand around with sinners or join in with mockers, but they delight in what? In the law of the Lord, meditating on it day and night. In the uh, Jewish law, in the book of Deuteronomy, there's this interesting set of commandments in chapter 17. God said to the Israelites, pe Israelite people before they entered into the promised land, he said that when you enter into the promised land, if you decide that you want to have a king, Here's some things that you should keep in mind. And one of them is this. It says this in verse 18. When he sits on the throne as king, he must copy for himself this body of instruction on a scroll in the presence of the Levitical priests. So he's got to make himself a copy of the law. He must always keep that copy with him and read it daily as long as he lives. That way he will learn to fear the Lord his God by obeying all the terms of these instructions and decrees. Verse 20, this regular reading will prevent him from becoming proud and acting as if he is above his fellow citizens. It will also prevent him from turning away from these commands in the smallest way, and it will ensure that he and his descendants will reign for many generations in Israel. Now, as you might know from, from the history uh, that's portrayed in scriptures, they weren't all that good at doing that, clearly, um, because a lot of the kings were really bad. But God says, if you want to have good kings that are going to rule you well and be humble and all that sort of stuff, they need to read the scripture every day. Every day. So there's this wisdom over and over in God's word that we need to read the scriptures daily, day and night, all day long, every day. But you know, Pastor Michael, <clears throat> there's some days, man, when I am just not feeling it. There are some days that I'm just feeling crummy and all I feel like doing is eating covered bridge dill pickle chips and watching reruns on Netflix. What about those days when I'm tired and I'm stressed and I'm frustrated? I would say maybe that's when we need to read it all the more. Even when I don't feel like it. King David, remember him? He was one of the good ones mostly. He had a few mishaps. But before he was officially installed as the king, he was on the run from the other king, Saul. And man, he was, he was on the run for years, and it was difficult. He hid in caves, and, and he was almost killed several times. How did he maintain his strength? Listen to what he writes. King David wrote in Psalm 119, verse 92. He says to God, If your law had not been my delight, I would have perished in my affliction. I will never forget your precepts, for by them you have given me life. I'm yours, save me, for I have sought your precepts. The wicked lie in wait to destroy me, but I consider your testimonies. In other words, man, I was as low as you could get. Life was hard. Things were bad. But your scriptures carried me through. The truth carried me through. 
And in the midst of all that suffering, I chose the Word of God. We can't always choose our circumstances, but we can choose to trust God and His Word through our circumstances. Amen? Amen. So, we want to have a healthy mind, a healthy brain. We've got to feed it the right stuff. Yeah, a little bit of junk food now and then is not such a big deal. Don't worry about that. I mean, you can have cheat days. You know what I'm saying? But we got to make sure that we are filling our minds with the truth of God's Word every day. Number two, I must free my mind from destructive thoughts. Feed my mind with the truth and free my mind from destructive thoughts. Your mind needs to be liberated. It needs to be delivered. It needs to be set free, released. Because we can all become prisoners of our own destructive thoughts. And some of you know exactly what I'm talking about. We can be prisoner to our thoughts. Getting control over our thought life is not easy for any of, any of us because we have enemies of the mind. And I would say that there's at least three enemies of the mind that are tag-teaming to negatively affect the way you think. Three enemies battling for control over your mind. And they are the world, the flesh, and the devil. The world, the flesh, and the devil. Let's talk about that first enemy, the world. So much in the world in which we live, and I mean, what I mean by that is the culture, is contrary to God's values systems. Have you noticed that? In the 1990s, there was a, an ad campaign for Sprite. And it said, obey your thirst. Anyone remember that? I think that sort of sums up the uh, prevailing attitude of our culture. The prevailing sort of, that's a good meme for our culture. Obey your thirst. Right? Whatever you hunger for, just do that. Don't obey God. Don't obey God's word. Obey your thirst. <clears throat> now I want a Sprite. <laughs> it works, I tell you. 1 John 2, 15 to 16 says, Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh and the desires of the eyes and the pride of life is not from the Father, but is from the world. Desires of the flesh, the passions, the desires of the eyes, the possessions, the desires uh, and the pride of life, position, passions, possessions, position. The world is tempting us and luring us to all of these things. These are the things of the world that we are tempted to, that we are immersed in constantly through TV and movies and music and magazines, classmates and coworkers, commercials, podcasts, broadcasts and books. We are being influenced all the time. There's a radio show that I like to listen to on CBC called Under the Influence. Maybe you've heard that before. And it's about advertising. And I like that it's called Under the Influence because it's implying that advertising is like alcohol. It's trying to get you under its influence so it will control your behavior. That's the world. We face this enemy of the world. That's a real thing that's hard for us. That's t trying to battle for control of our mind. What's the second enemy? We said the world, the flesh, and the devil. The flesh. My old sinful nature. I want to read Romans chapter 7. This is uh, a... a I really love this passage, uh, starting in verse 21, uh, because I can relate to it. And it's so honest, what Paul writes here. Paul, you know, the apostle, the one who was church planting all through the Middle East, uh, I mean, just on fire for the Lord. But listen to what he says. He says, I have discovered this principle of life, that when I want to do what is right, I inevitably do what is wrong. I love God's law with all my heart, but there is another power within me that is at war with my mind. And this power makes me a slave to the sin that is still within me. Man, he's saying, I don't do the things I want to do, and the things that I don't want to do, I do. Why do I do that? Well, it's because we have this sinful nature in us, pulling us in the wrong direction. Do you ever find yourself in that position, doing things that you don't really want to do? 
or are knowingly engaging in self-defeating behavior. Oh, I know I shouldn't do this, but I just can't help myself. Yeah, yeah, I get it. And that's what Paul is talking about. Our old sinful nature, the flesh, is one of the enemies trying to take our minds captive. And the third enemy is the devil. Now, the devil can't control your mind if you're a Christian. That's not possible. The Bible says, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. If you have Jesus in you, if you have the Holy Spirit in you, you're protected from that. But he wants to. And so I believe he plants things, thoughts into your mind. From the moment you wake up in the morning, the devil starts dropping little seeds of lies into your mind. Little lies like, oh, this is... This is not going to be a good day. Don't bother trying today. Nothing's going to change. Oh, you're going to be so tired. Today is going to be so stressful. Oh, you look bad. Oh, you're, you're stupid. Nobody would miss you if you were gone. All throughout the day, you know, you should get even with that person. Oh, check out that woman. <whistles> Click on that website. Post that snarky comment go for that extra large burger why don't you or that waffle uh, why don't you just go back to bed and give up on today these are these little seeds these little lies that Satan is dropping in our minds you don't have to accept those thoughts Rick Warren says don't believe everything you think You have an enemy who is lying to you. Satan is a liar. The Bible calls him the father of, of lies. So, you can see we have this triple threat against us. The world, the flesh, and the devil. No wonder we struggle. No wonder God is so gracious. He understands that it's not easy for us staying on the straight and narrow. We have these enemies of the mind, but we can fight these enemies of the mind. We can free our minds from destructive thoughts. Or someone said one time, from all that stinking thinking. <laughs> Second Corinthians chapter 10 is, is really good. It says this. For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. Paul writes of divine weapons that can demolish strongholds. We literally sang about it this morning. The battle belongs to God. When I fight, I'll fight on my knees with my hands lifted high. That's how we fight. The power of God at work in our lives is how we win this battle. Through prayer, through worship, through practicing the spiritual disciplines, through taking in God's word. That's how we fight against these strongholds in our mind. Not by our strength, but entirely by his strength. And when we do that, verse 5 says, we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. I love that image. Taking captive our thoughts and making them obedient to Christ. I like that image. Making our brains obey Jesus. You know, my mind, I don't know about yours, but my mind often has a mind of its own. My mind rebels. I know what's good and true and right, but destructive thinking, lies, temptations, they, they just come. The scripture says, take every one of those negative, destructive thoughts and apprehend them, arrest them, take them captive, and instead of letting them take you captive, take those thoughts captive by the power of God in you and train your brain into obedience to Jesus. So, we've got to free our minds from destructive thoughts. Draw close to God. He will draw close to you. Fight on your knees. With your hands lifted high. He will fight for you. Okay. So three daily choices for a healthy mind. That's what we're talking about this morning. The first is to feed my mind 
with the truth every day to be getting into God's Word, to be putting the true story in there instead of the lies of the world. Free my mind from destructive thinking that the world, the flesh, and the devil plant in me. Take them captive. Don't believe the lies. And the third thing is this. I must focus my mind on the right things. There's at least four things that the Bible tells us as Christians to focus our mind on. Four things that should be top of mind in our thoughts every single day. And this is what they are. Number one, focus on Jesus. Pretty straightforward. 2 Timothy 2.8 says, Remember Jesus Christ. Remember. Risen from the dead, the offspring of David, as preached in my gospel. Remain mindful of the truths of the gospel, of the true story of Jesus. As his disciples, you know, we're supposed to be following him, right? That's what it's about. As his apprentices, as his disciples. So we better keep him top of mind, eh? Yeah, right? It's like George Harrison saying, I got my mind set on you. We got to get our mind set on Jesus every day. Number two, focus on others. Focus on the right things. Focus on Jesus. Focus on others. Don't be selfish. Think about other people once in a while, would you? Philippians chapter 2. Verse 4, let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus. Hebrews 10, 24, and let us consider, let us think about how to stir up one another to love and good works. We need to focus on the right things. We need to focus on Jesus. We need to focus on others. What else? Focus on the positive. We are instructed to think positive thoughts. I'm not saying the power of positive thinking, but the Bible does say to think about positive things. Philippians 4.8 is a really valuable verse that if you find yourself having destructive thoughts, man, this is a good scripture to memorize and to recite to yourself. It says this, Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. That's what you should be thinking about. If you're into, uh, if you're into old-timey music, uh, check out Bing Crosby's song, Accentuate the Positive. You ever heard that one? You got to accentuate the positive eliminate the negative latch on to the affirmative and don't mess with Mr. In-Between you got to spread joy up to the maximum bring gloom down to the minimum anyway, it's great great old song accentuate the positive there is plenty of negativity in the world but God's word says to look for the rose among the thorns for the diamond in the rough Look for the blessings. See the good. Focus on the positive. And the fourth thing, focus on eternity. Colossians 3.2 says, Set your mind on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. Now that doesn't mean we should never think about the world in which we live or all that, the needs of the world. No, that's not what he's saying. He's saying don't focus all your attention on matters of the earth. Oftentimes we're fixated on our current hurts rather than our future hope. When all we see is the challenge that is right in front of us, it can be very easy to get discouraged. But if we could see the big picture, the long-range forecast, including what awaits us in heaven, it can change how we live today. Think with an eternal perspective. All right, so if we're going to have a healthy mind, there are at least three things <clears throat> that we must do every day, three daily choices. We need to feed our minds constantly with the truth of God's Word. We need to free our mind from destructive thoughts that the world, the flesh, and the devil may plant in us to lure us into sin and destructive thinking. And we must focus our minds on the things that God wants us to focus on. On Jesus, on others instead of self, on positivity, and on eternity. Amen? Yes. Amen. Amen.
In home church this week, there's going to be five more principles for a healthy mind from Pastor Rick. So much good stuff here this morning for us to chew on. As the worship team comes to close us, let me just say a word of prayer. <clears throat> Father, we thank you that your word is so practical at times, so helpful. It's not just theology. It's not just philosophy. It's very practical to help us as we go through this life as human beings in this world. And today, God, we thank you for these truths that remind us, Lord, of ways that we can live in accordance with you and your spirit. We thank you, God, that you care about all aspects of our being, including our minds. And so, God, we, we, we invite you, God, to work in our minds, to free us from destructive thinking. We invite you, God, to uh, heal us if we are struggling with mental illness. God, we, we know that you can do that. And sometimes you do that miraculously and sometimes you do that medically through counseling, through support, whatever it might be. We ask God for healing for us and others who are struggling. And as we go out into this week and we face this world, we pray that you would help us to focus our hearts and minds on what is true and good and right and positive, on Jesus, on the true story of the gospel, and not on what the world offers. So we ask for your help, Lord, as we, as we seek to serve you fully. And if there's anyone here today who has never trusted in Jesus Christ as their Savior, I pray that today may be the day that they make that decision for the first time. They wouldn't even leave this room without taking a moment to pause and pray and ask you to forgive them of their sins to set them free from destructive thinking, from the sins that have bogged them down, to give them new life through Jesus Christ and his work on the cross. We pray in his name. Amen.